not to be like the world and not to be like the great majority of American Christians, but to be like Jesus Christ. I don't know why you're clapping. I'm talking about you. What's wrong with you people? I'm serious. You can't say amen. You ought to say ouch. Hello, humblebees. Welcome to Tulips and Honey. Hello, Plankton here, humblebees. Welcome to Tulips and Honey, where the cool kids come for the theological discussions. <laughs> Here's your host, Lauren Herford. Hi, hi, humblebees. <laughs> Welcome back to a very special edition of Tulips and Honey. Obviously, as you can see, if you're watching on YouTube or here, if you are watching, not watching, slash listening over on the podcasting channel, I have a very special guest here. Incredibly handsome, unbelievably wonderful. My husband has agreed to join me for the program today, so he is going to be here as my guest. And we're going to be talking about some really cool stuff. Huh? Mr. Krabs has never given me that sort of compliment, <laughs> but I do so thank you. I had I had to bribe him and twist his arm to get him to do all of these really, really cool uh, impersonations. It is a flirt thing because he does really fun impersonations and it's one of my like favorite things about him. And so he's going to be doing impersonations for us today, too, as well as uh, just general entertainment. That's what you're here for. That's true. Yep. I'll do a few of them if you like. Yeah. Uh, amongst the discussion. R right. Throw you know. them in there as we go, and and I'll just I'll yeah. just crack up hysterically, and and you guys don't miss the blooper reel at the end no. because it's gonna be fantastic. Yeah, let's just make it crazy around yeah. here. We're just gonna go. Yeah, this is gonna be a really really fun episode. So if you are new to this channel, I am your host Lauren Herford. I'm of course being joined today, as we just said, by my husband. This is a reformed. <laughs> oh, what? I just did a small wave. Should cute. I not do any hand gestures? No, I like it. It was adorable. Yeah. No, I mean, some some hand gestures don't do, but that one you yep. can wait. You can wait. Okay. So this is a, a Reformed Baptist uh, podcasting channel. So if you are listening on the channel and not watching over on YouTube, then you already know that we have on Tuesdays, the Aquila and Priscilla Hour. And then on Saturdays, we had Emma from Always Only. And sadly, she's going to be leaving us this month, but we were so blessed to have her as long as we had her. On Sundays, we have Breath of Life. On Mondays, of course, you're probably listening to this on Mondays. It might be Tuesday. I don't know. It could even be Wednesday, Friday. There's other days of the week, isn't there? Not sure what year Do people it is. actually listen? To I'm a night shifter, country? so I'm just. You have no idea. I right? have no clue what day it well, is. Don't I don't even know what time it is, really. <laughs> so I just go with it. I am so sorry. I wait for the phone call. It's really it's hard to be a night shifter, isn't it? It's so tough. Being we're going to tell shifter. them all about. It. We're going to tell them all about that. It's been difficult, but we're going to get there. We're going to get to it. So on Mondays is my program. We have coming up soon. Re like probably within like I don't know maybe the next month. Brooke Bartz is going to be joining the channel, so she's going to be doing a podcast titled um, Open Hearts. So we're really excited about having Brooke join us for that. But for today's episode, we're going to be talking about just about. I'm in North Dakota too long. We're. <laughs> A boat. A boat. We're going to be talking about my um, my sweet husband and I, how we met, how we got married, what our lives are like, a little bit of like a background for you guys, because we do have so many new listeners. A lot of you guys were sent here by either Doreen Virtue or Alan Hunter. We're very thankful for both of their channels and for their shout outs that they have given. So this is sort of a fun episode where you guys are just going to get to know me a little bit better, know my family, my husband. And we're going to be talking a lot about like how we ended up being reformed, what we think about podcasting, how this podcast came about. And, um, and you're going to be here to do the comic relief of, of uh, accents and yep. impersonations. Accents, impressions, whatever yeah. you got. Yep, I'll be the comedic relief today. So, uh, Patrick, we just want to thank all the new listeners and subscribers today, don't you think? Yeah, we okay. should. <laughs> I can't do them. I can't do any of them. So I can't, I can't communicate with you. <laughs> that sounded so good. <laughs> you can't take it. How does he keep a straight face while he's doing this? It's, it's just, I don't know. Yeah. It's, just medication like for show. the brain. They make it. Yep. You got to have it. And he could literally be the whole show of SpongeBob. That's, that's impressive. And we don't even watch SpongeBob. No, we don't. Kaylee no. never even got into it. So I don't know no. how you got so good at that, but. I appreciate that. Yeah. I think it's welcome. just from my grueling childhood growing up in the nineties, early two thousands, mm -hmm. there was nothing else on. You had the three channels. There's baseball, SpongeBob, and then TV and, and. You didn't want to watch TV. <sighs> you didn't want to watch old Kenneth Copeland? Absolutely not. <laughs> that guy's my absolute. 
favorite okay. this terror worst Scary. person to hate yep oh okay well don't hate but no we don't hate that's sinful yeah sorry about that we're gonna pray for him it's okay <laughs> So, so far, so good. So, so far, far, it's so awkward. Good. That's okay. We're going to do fine. But we'll be, yeah. You're doing great. You're doing great. Okay. So, we are going to start out today by giving you guys a quick overview of how we met. So, we met actually way back in... 2006, I believe. That's right. 2006. Yep. 2006. Most guys don't remember when they first met, but I think I remember our first kiss. I think I remember our first date, even though I was broke and bored and I was <laughs> well, you were bored on a date with me well no 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 but, but like I was just <laughs> bored in general with life I didn't have you know um I, I played sports but I just did not have anything as exciting as you in my life oh that is so sweet. that's a pretty good line guys it is people they need they need these guys they need to like start taking notes because this is him all the time like he's just always on point with his compliments so um <laughs> you were a senior in high school I was done with high school so I was one year ahead of you um I'm about what 10 months older than you yeah, yep, you're the cougar of the relationship. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? Whenever we got married. So come on, guys. You got to get you one of these. <laughs> An older woman? Yes, they're very experienced, loving, caring. They've been through a lot. Uh -huh. I was through 10 more months than you. Yeah. So that's like a whole pregnancy. It's quite a bit. 10 months, yeah. About it, yeah. It is. It's a long time. Whenever we were married at 19 and I was 20, I turned 21 and he was still 20. So I was legally his guardian because uh, he was not 21 Thank goodness yet. we did not require alcohol in our relationship. We don't. No. But yeah, we're not. We're it not would have been very, now. yeah. Like, I feel like I... <laughs> I feel like you were ch changing my huggies for those 10 months. and I, um, I would if I needed to. Yeah, I would do that for you. It's a good thing you were there. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to get that first truck. You would have you had to sign all the paperwork. Remember when we rented our first car? Yeah. You got to be 25 to rent a car. Yep, we, we did not 21. know that. When we were 21, we were like, well, we've got it made. Now we can rent cars to yep. go on vacation. Yep. And we did not know that's, that's not a 25. It no, it's yeah. absolutely not. So we met in 2006. You were 18 and I was. No, you were 17 and I was 18. Yep. But we did not start dating until February of 2007. So when we met, I was wondering what the first thing you noticed was about me. Oh, your beautiful smile. Always. Aww. Your smile. That was the prettiest thing I think I've ever seen in my entire life. I saw you sitting at that table and I thought, oh my gosh, that girl's smile is beautiful. Like, look at her perfect teeth, everybody. Check it out. Oh my gosh, look at that smile. Mm, so beautiful. <laughs> If you guys are not watching on YouTube, then you just miss my incredibly goofy mm -hmm. faces because I'm not good at being complimented. But thank you. That's very sweet. It was so gorgeous. Then you had that like light brown, kind of almost an auburn curly hair all done up. And you had your makeup all done very pretty and eloquent. And um, you weren't dressed, you know, as most of the, the females that I've seen dressed um, um, in that type of, you know, environment. And mm -hmm at our age so you were dressed very eloquently and i appreciated that about you oh that's so sweet oh he just remembers a bunch it was a church party right a youth group party it was a church party yep youth group party i think it was it might have been thanksgiving like after thanksgiving, thanksgiving yeah. going into christmas so it was kind of a christmas chris giving it was dinner. holiday yeah it was a holiday something yep. or another you know, and Someone told you that I was engaged. You asked somebody. They did. They told me uh, this is another girl named Lauren and said that, you know, I had kind of been seeing this girl on and off too at church. And she told me that you had been engaged, that you weren't interested. And so I thought, eh, we'll put that to the test. <laughs> and so I messaged her on a or AOL or no, AIM. MySpace. MySpace? No, no, no. It was AIM. You're yep, right. It was, it oh, was my AIM. goodness. Her, AIM. her, um, what was it? Your, your screen name was Mighty Mouse Roo. Mighty Mouse Roo. So you couldn't Absolutely. find me because I didn't have my name on there. I was nope. Mighty Mouse Yeah. Roo. So I kept typing your name over and over and over again and I never could find it. And I thought, what is her last name? Brown, right? That's like, I mean, I know it's a, a pretty like conventional last name, Common. but, um, so I typed it. I, I just tried to find your profile picture. I never could find it. And then you had to tell me after the fourth time I asked you what it was. It was Mighty Mouse Roo. So I thought, okay, it's three or four times here. Maybe she is engaged. Maybe she's not looking for a relationship. <laughs> he introduced himself to me every Sunday at church trying yeah. to get me to tell him his last name. And I just thought he was like a polite Southern gentleman, you know. Like, Hi, you know, I'm, I'm Justin Herford. No, and... I was really growing impatient with you. Yeah. <laughs> Had you yeah. only known how very much patience oh, you're going to need. Yeah, it requires a lot, but it's worth it. Oh, you're so sweet. Well, I think the first thing that I noticed about you was your eyes, because you've got big, beautiful blue eyes, and your super broad shoulders, because you, oh, yeah. you were and wearing I, your Letterman jacket. My waist was just a bit smaller back then, because I did 
um, work out quite a bit. Well, it was forced upon us twice a day when you're in sports. It's just, you know, all my sports guys out there, they force it on you. They force a diet on you. They force everything on you. So they like build you and mold you to what they want you to be. And so um, after that, I was just like, you know what? I'm tired of diet. I'm tired of restrictions. I'm just going to do what I want. And so the waist grew with the shoulders, put her up over 360, 365 pounds and uh, lost a hundred of it. But no, I'm um, so proud of you, but there was more to love. Thank you. Thank more you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There was like also risk of heart attack and, you know, atherosclerosis and stuff like that. But um, also you weren't able to get a hug around me. You were kind of like halfway. Like I can hug you now. Oh, and then that's how we gauge <laughs> our relationship yeah. after my weight loss, right? Like, weight, yes. like, okay, how many yep. fingers can you latch around me now? That's true. I forgot about Half that. A finger. Okay. Yeah. You got two fingers this time. Money. I've lost three <gasps> oh, pounds this week. Oh, I forgot. We did do. We used to do that all the we time. We did. I'm like, okay, you're sure you're, you're around my waist. You're not like around my ribs, right? Yes, it's like down here where the belly right. is. Okay. So we still got about 50 or so pounds to go, but you're doing amazing. I'm, I, so proud of you. I'm giving her heck and I want to be healthy for you and Kaylee um, so that we can finish what we started back yeah. what 13 years ago yeah. 13 years ago. holy cow. well 12 years of marriage 13 years of dating so we started dating Guys, it feels in like an eternity but wow, it's good it. but it's amazing it is I hear it's, amazing. That, that it's okay if we feed our husbands to tigers ah that's what the sardine oil was for that's what sardine oil was for. okay so you better watch yep. it. that makes sense <laughs> i've tried sorry <laughs> excuse me so i mean did, if we're really going to talk about like the differences in how we look then and how we look now, I mean, I was 90 pounds when you met me. You were 90 soaking wet, yeah. but I mean, we had to put something on you because I was literally could hold you with just one arm, especially when we started like dating at first. I was like, where I have never dated somebody this thin before. Like, let's go to the sports grill and I'm going to get you a hamburger. And if you don't consume the entire <laughs> thing and it's 1400 calories, I'm not sure if we can date. Oh my cause... goodness, that's legitimately what you did. I had never met anybody whose mom cooked so many carbs for dinner. I mean, you yeah. guys would have three different kinds of meat Fried for chicken. every meal. Yeah. And then we would have, so if it was steak night, it was steak, ribs, sausage. Yep, every, yes. And then we would do macaroni and cheese, mashed potatoes, pork and beans, rolls. I mean, potato it was the whole, salad, potato salad. Fries. It was the whole like Southern cuisine. I mean, it was comfort food every, every single time. night. Yeah. And then my mom would be worried and be like, gosh, baby, you're kind of gaining weight, ain't you? Like, mm. <laughs> like yeah, like you mom, cooking is delicious. <laughs> mom, I have to consume calories. And if they're, if you're going to put that on the table, I will eat that. Yeah. yeah, it was delicious. I had never seen anybody cook like that. And every Sunday, that was what we were eating. Yeah. So it didn't take very long. And then I went to your house and I saw what you guys ate. And I just had a plate of macaroni and cheese in front of me. And I thought, this is a precursor. This is a promissory note. <laughs> That real food's coming toward me. I'm waiting. Okay, this is going to be so good. I got practice today. She knows I'm hungry. I went over to her house just to hang out for a little bit before practice. And the mac and cheese was all I received. That and a hug and a kiss goodbye. It's true. I had no idea how to cook. It was a sad day. I'm not still not very good at cooking. You're a really good cook. You have finally figured out that that smoke alarm. Okay, no, you. I still use the smoke alarm. As a timer. Yeah, you do. Yep. Yep. Most of the time. But I mean, we're talking that 20 to 30% improvement. That is a vast improvement over 13 years. That's like, true. Some That's people n- never improve and you become one heck of a cook and a wonderful baker too. Aww. If we can just get you to stay in there and like focus, focus and yeah. watch it. And then, but most people are too busy. Like that's the only reason I can cook decently is because he focus. he's an amazing cook. He's as decent. He's, he is um, unbelievable. Well, anybody, I mean, I can barbecue stuff on the grill, but it's not... See, my dad, we, we grew up on really dry steak. And I now I know <laughs> how offended I am by my dad making that for me. <laughs> so we eat medium to medium rare around here now, and it's so good. But, yeah, I have to stay out there and watch it. Otherwise, I'll lose it and, and start burning stuff, too. Well, not burning it, but it'll become medium. Yeah. And who could eat that? No, not me. Uh, not any no, cooking. you're amazing. But you're also good cooking inside. So he's helped, he's taught me quite a bit about, like, how to not get burned. Um. The one thing that is a benefit about me cooking and being as um, clumsy as I am is that I have no more feelings left in the tips of my fingers. So That comes in handy a yeah, lot. It does, right? Like, you wouldn't think about this. Because I barely have a callus on mine. Right. I can pick up hot plates, and it doesn't hurt yeah. at all. Benefit of hospital workers. You don't have to, like, you know, ingrain a whole, whole lot of calluses in your hand there. And then when I need her to pick up stuff that's 
you know, very burning hot, mm-hmm. she's there for me. That's Tips what like, marriage is all about, guys. Tips of the fingers, they have no feelings left. I can do that all day yeah. long. So because I burned my hands so many times by reaching into things that were like boiling oil or yeah. uh, stoves that were on without a mitten, you know. Um, yep. But I feel like now as an adult, it was worth it. Yeah. What was you that know? laugh I gave you whenever when, whenever you burn it? Was it? <laughs> Patrick. It's You're okay. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I but seriously, it. though, I was so worried about you because that was the <laughs> biggest and brightest and worst burn I think I'd ever seen. That was the worst third degree oh, burn I'd ever seen. Yeah, yeah you poured bad. the yeah you poured the bacon grease all over you after you were On cooking. Accident, yeah. You were just about to burn it, right? She was so close to burning the bacon. Yeah. She did not want another, you know, tick on on that record there. Yeah. So she opened the oven, pulled the bacon out. Tried to push the oven back up very sloppily, and she's trying to put it on the counter. And as she did, oh, poor I baby! I had an itch in the eye. See, that's uh, the thing. This is the thing it that burnt your whole me the arm, most. but over an itch, like your wrist like, first is reward what, on that. One though one of my hands was empty is the thing. One of the hands had bacon grease, boiling hot bacon grease from the stove. The other hand was empty. All I had to do was itch my eye with the other empty hand, but instead I lifted the hand to hold in the pan. And, yeah, where and, do we? I don't know where we go from there. You know, really, we went. We didn't go to the hospital. Thank sure, God I did not that. want to go to Thank the hospital, you, but we went mercy. to a brain doctor after that. Yeah, why it was happening. And she fixed you right up. She did. For the most part. I mean, Sometimes. it's 50-50. It's yeah. really not. It's 25-70. Yeah. You're being generous. Okay, so yeah, that is a few little squirrels there, but that is how we met and how we were dating. Yeah, um, we went to go see, what did we do? When I took you out on a date, we went to see Christmas lights. Christmas lights. And had Brahms ice cream. If you've never been to Brahms ice cream, guys, please. You're missing out on delicacy. And if you really want to win your lady over, yep. and it happens to be Christmas time. What'd you get? Christmas lights. Christmas lights, and then you got a double scoop of, what was it, Rocky Road, or just chocolate fudge? I got um, the single serve, the, the serve frost. I'm pretty sure it was a did, double. Was it? Double you have third. a better memory than I do. Yeah, it wasn't a single at that point. Were you point. paying, or no, was I'm just I kidding. Paying? I think it was a single still at that point. <laughs> 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 well, I was working already at that point whenever we when we started dating because I had finished high school and I was going to go to college yep. online. So I was working as a waitress. And I was just umpiring baseball still, just making, I mean. And they make pretty good. Age, yeah. yeah, umpires are not. I mean, they, they do pretty good. It's good for being at home with mom and dad. Yeah. You know, like if that was my career choice, mm-hmm. I mean, if I, you know, you work your way up to the major leagues and then maybe it's a decent living. But at this point, yeah, we couldn't. Oh, my gosh. You beans and rice. Lungs? Beans and rice. Yeah. That's what we were having. Oh, when we <laughs> first got married. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. When we got married, yeah, we were we were definitely yeah. ramen noodling it. But we um you the funny thing is is about the uh the lights is that you actually found me on AIM. You invited me to the movies that Friday, but church was Wednesday night. So you told you told my mom that you would uh drive me home. And so that's that's the cute thing. Like we had a date planned for the movies on Friday. That's right. You didn't have a car then. Yeah, no, I didn't even have a driver's license yet. No driver's license, no car. Oh yeah. my gosh, I was your saving grace back yeah. then. Like I mean, you just boom, was, yep, fell mm-hmm. into God's miracle there in his true. mercy. Knight in shining armor, right here. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot all about that, yeah, man. You drove we me. had to work from the ground up with you. Oh, and yeah. I just had my driver's license in a small truck. That was it. Oh, your little Ford Ranger. Yeah, she oh, wouldn't reverse. God. She would not reverse. Oh, Red, she was, Great. boy, she was a. She, Gosh, she was difficult to drive. I had to hold her kind of at a 45 to keep her straight. <laughs> and then to reverse, you had to hit the gas really hard because the transmission was slipping. And I didn't have 800 bucks to fix it. Dad definitely wasn't going to fix it up for us. So <laughs> he'd rather, we'd rather walk than almost drive that thing. Oh, well, sometimes we did have to walk. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Drive that thing. <laughs> like all good married couples, you know, those struggles right at the way, you know, yeah, right, right didn't at the first year. It felt like a struggle at no. the beginning, though. It just, it felt like we just uh, had each other. Fun. Yeah, yeah. Just, everything was fun. Like, oh, our truck broke down. Oh, well, we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. No, God, will, God will make the way. Really, oh, that's what we said. Yes. We would literally sit in the drive with all these bills when we first True. got married and no, and no way to get to work or, or, or not even a job, you know, sometimes. And we would just sit there in the driveway and cry and just be like, oh, my God, please help us, Lord. Like, yeah. you are the way and the truth. You've, you've got us, you know. And um, if, if you choose to, you know, you could either you, this, let this be a struggle to help make us better from our failures. And he sure did. We, we definitely did. We, I mean, at that time, we were still in the word of faith. We were being told, oh. basically, <laughs> essentially, you just get told, oh, you're having a rough time. Um, speak things into existence. Yep. Yeah. And did you speak in thing. tongues whenever you did that? Because it doesn't, does it doesn't not, count. Doesn't count. Tongues, no. Yeah. 
so we got married in 2008 and we had um we had a shotgun marriage no that's not right shotgun is if you're pregnant right right no. I, well i think so and then we went to the court just the court peace. Yard. yes the justice of peace so um you were sort of up, well not up a creek without a paddle but you you and your folks were not quite getting along. You'd come home for the summer from college. Yeah. And you just spent a first full year in college on your own. Right. So I was ready and willing to rebel right away. As soon as I came home, I knew what I wanted. I knew if I didn't get that, we were done. And I already had my own apartment. Yep. You so, did. Uh, and I was definitely not letting you stay the night there. Um, I was like. That was a no-no. Until you get married. Don't even don't ask. Don't even ask. Yeah. <laughs> so here you call me one morning. I'm not at this point at least. <laughs> I had no choice. I had no, yeah. I had no like out no. at all. Like, well, I mean, you could have slept on my mom's couch, Oh. but at this point I was working in downtown Dallas. I had a nice office job. Yep. So that makes you feel kind of responsible. You know, you're putting on a cute little suit dress skirt thingy yep. and putting on your high heels and you're driving to work. And yep. so it felt like I was more responsible than I, was I actually what? was. Reading you were 19. meters. I was 19 reading meters for the city. For the city. I was 20. Yep. And you guys got into a little uh, tiff at home at like four in the morning over whether or not you were going to take some extra courses at college. Yeah. I take 18. I took 18 credit hours that last semester there and they wanted me to take another six during the summer. And I thought, Oh my gosh, like, I need just a bit of a break. I wanted to focus on baseball. Like I had had a scholarship to play baseball. I thought, man, I just want to kind of, you know, hone my skills and, and um, start getting uh, paying more attention to that because I knew what I want, where I wanted to go with baseball. And they were like, nope, you're not doing any of that. You're going to go and go to school. And I said, well, who in the heck is going to pay for that? Like <laughs> I don't have a scholarship to the community college and it's, right, you know, yeah. it's $200 per credit hour. So that's 1200 bucks. So Which I didn't have, a lot to us back It was then. a lot yeah, to us. We right. had no money whatsoever. I was making $30 a game umpiring, and I would maybe umpire, I don't know, five set to seven games a week, yep. right? So that's mm -hmm. 200 bucks a week, and they wanted me to pay 1200 right away, right up front, and there was just no way I could do it. So that was kind of what our tiff and argument was about, was over that, and yeah. man, well, I just couldn't do it, so I had to jet out of there. They told <laughs> me to leave the truck, so I walked all the way down to... To Lauren's house, where she was, she was at her mom's for just, you know, the day or whatever. And I texted her and I said, I need your help. Like, you know, I need to I need a place I need to somewhere sleep. to go. And you're like, oh, sure. That's great. You're not going to sleep there, but um, we can go get married. <laughs> that's literally I said, I well, you got I'm any counted. plans at lunchtime? Because if you have nothing planned at lunchtime, we can just that's go exactly get married. That's exactly right. <laughs> I said, we're already, we already know we're going to get married anyway, yeah. but you're not sleeping on my couch unless we're married. So. Yeah. That was, and that, I had not heard any of that from my family at home. They were, you know, also word of faith, Pentecostal mm -hmm. folks that, but I had never heard any of that. I heard date around, you know, don't, don't give yourself to, to just one woman. And so I looked at her and I was like, are you crazy? Like I can't <laughs> just stay on the couch for a couple of nights, like until I get it together with my family. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely not. So boy, hook, line and sinker there, huh? <laughs> 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 oh gosh, you got me good. No, but it, it turned out to be the best thing that we had ever we'd ever done we haven't looked back since that's true and we did actually eventually have a wedding but we did we yep. were already married by that point so and that was boy that was definitely awkward we don't want to spill any guts on that but man oh no, you know weddings cow. are one of those things that are such a tremendous waste of time and money people spend tw that, what is the average like 15 to twenty thousand yeah. dollars per wedding like who in the, the world wedding. but you know they have a lot of help from you know, their mom and dad and parents, yeah, and we didn't have that support that's, that's true. back then. So we were funding and making all of our wedding decorations. It's not, not to make people feel sorry for us, but no, no, we just, well, yeah, we just did what we did. Yeah. We found, yeah, that it was just, <laughs> we're not complaining. This is not efficient story. to spend all of our money doing that. No, it's not. It's really, um, and that's another thing I was going to ask you about before we move on to like when we had babies and stuff was we dated, um, we dated off and on for a year before, I guess a little over a year before we got married. Um, but we had no accountability and you're, you're talking a 19, an 18 and a 19 year old, that, no, guidance. Um, no guidance, no accountability. And so we obviously are not going to let our daughter date like that, like how we dated. And if you weren't such a, a Southern gentleman, I, I feel like there's a lot of other guys out there that probably would have taken a lot more advantage of that situation than you did. But I mean, you were busy, you had baseball, you had a lot of stuff going on. But yeah, I definitely didn't give you the attention you deserve, especially at the first of the marriage. Like I was really, you know, self-centered and, and lacked accountability at that part. Well, even like before that though, I'm thinking like, 
when we were just dating, oh. could you imagine letting Kaylee just go no. in the car with somebody? I, could, I mean, no, no, Daddy be right there, right behind you. Yeah. I'll be sitting in the second row to the where you're at, like, and we can all have popcorn, share drinks together at the movie theater. I'm glad we agree on that. Yeah, it's just not appropriate back, because yeah. that you do those things so that they lead to something like that. Right. And that's the only reason you don't do it. You can come hang out at my house mm-hmm. while I'm in the living room with you. Right. You know, or vice versa. Let's get to know but, each other, get to know the families and stuff. Right. And yeah. a proper gentleman and a proper young man or a proper young woman, A, the young woman wouldn't let that happen yeah. just like you didn't. Right. And B, the young man would, would not. We believe in the in the courtship and, and being able to do it yeah. like that because it's not appropriate to leave them leave them alone, especially with all those driving hormones at that age. I, yeah. I couldn't imagine. Without an understanding of like the repercussions, even if you try to teach your children, we that, were told date around, yeah, sleep around with other people if you like. Can you believe yeah. that's something that people taught? Like in the church that we were in, me. like the church that we were in had no, um, there was no sort of accountability, yep. but also there was no teaching for young people about how important nope. this is, how biblical it is. Right. It wasn't until they did uh, never, they never that I understood how biblical it is to to wait and to not be yep. to not be put in the situation where you could sin. Like that, you want to flee those those youthful lusts, like the scripture says. But we weren't taught that, so we were in that like tunnel vision with what our parents have told us. We had no outside experience. We had no idea what to do. Nobody had taught us different. Everybody that we knew were in that Word of Faith Pentecostal movement. And we kind of did as they said, and it wasn't until Lauren pulled me out of that, pulled me out of my relationship with my parents and, and feeling um, such like a, um, like I was tethered to them and nobody else until she pulled me out of that. There was no, I had no reason to believe otherwise. Yeah. That's, that's kind of a weird thing for kiddos. Like we just grow up here in the one thing. And that's why it's important. I think like what we do with Kaylee is we teach her multiple different like yep. opinions and how and lifestyles you yeah so that way she can actually make an educated decision as an adult right. but we do tell her which one is right and which, which one, one is, is wrong biblical yeah yep. yeah and absolutely. biblically yeah biblically which any other thing is is wrong besides yeah. that the scripture says to um leave your your mother and father and cling, cling to your spouse and, and so that's what we had to do we left the state we went to a different my state my parents would just not seem to ever <laughs> understand that it's because <laughs> you're it. so awesome i don't blame them you're just that's you're nice so, you're so wonderful nice i wouldn't want him i wouldn't want him to leave either who would want to have a five-point argument after this would we so you have to say that right you thank you yeah. that's right <laughs> so onward and upward <laughs> yes we don't ever fight we're like one of those married couples that literally never fight yep. you know those that don't actually exist because mm-hmm. that's not a possibility it's revelation not. somewhere talks about liars right I does think. it does it talk about that somewhere in scripture or something about like one of the commandments oh, about lying? oh for sure there's commandment yeah about not bearing false witness but well so we got anyway married. anyhow we got married and um i was still working downtown and you had a job I, I feel like it's possible that that job working for the city where back then he had to pull up that big concrete thing. It might actually have been the point where your back started. Oh to my slip. gosh. Any kind of hard labor like that. I mean, I was already doing football and baseball and doing reading meters and stuff like that. It was just too much. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I had started having some issues with my back and that just kind of started the process of the deterioration there. I think it's possible. Yeah. yeah. But we didn't get a chance to actually check, but so we're married and we get married in September of 2008. Yep. In um, January of 2010. No, February. Was it February? March. When did I get pregnant with Kaylee? Uh, January, right? I think. But so I, she was born I found in October. out in April, right? She was born in October. She was 37 weeks gestation, so she was three weeks early. Yep. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. <laughs> That'd be nine months. Yep. So around January. So around okay. January. Yep. So in April, I think I took a test and I came out and you were sitting there at your parents' table. I don't know why I took the test at your parents' house. I think we were going over there after church or something. And I, I just couldn't wait until we got home. Yep. And I came out and I mimicked um, a baby bump and said, we're having a baby. Yeah, and I went. whispered it. No, and went. you just walked in. <laughs> <laughs> And vomited everywhere. Yep, and I said, "Oh my gosh, that's so great!" <laughs> Congratulations! I can't wait. <laughs> so yeah, you were twenty-one yep. at that point. I was twenty-two. Yep, and I was in school full time, doing full-time. what I do now, respiratory therapy. And I finished that up, and Kaylee was one by the time that was done. So it was mm-hmm. what, what, 2011, 2012? Yep, or something like that. Yeah, so twenty eleven, and then we started traveling. What a year later after that. 
We did, yeah. But I was going to ask you about Kaylee before we talk about your super cool oh, job. Oh, please talk to me about my girl. Okay, because this is your favorite thing to talk my about. My favorite. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, so if you guys don't know, husbands, tough Southern men, they need daughters, right? So um, you... <laughs> Obviously, whenever we found out that I was pregnant, it was quite the surprise. We were not um, disappointed, not disappointed or anything, but it was a surprise. No. And uh, and we made it through your schooling. I was still working downtown, so that yeah. was a big help. We just didn't know how we were going to handle it with no jobs, no money, no schooling. I mean, it was going to be tight. Yeah. yeah. I, at least I had the job. You downtown. had that job downtown. Really great insurance. Was helpful. Yeah, that was helpful. Don't touch my mic. Yes, ma'am. This is like- Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so um, so we we have Kaylee. Um, when you found out that it was going to be a little girl, what did you think? I just thought, man, here come all of those like, you know, sad, sad songs and mantras about, <laughs> you know, like there goes my baby, and there goes, you know, she's going off to marry somebody, and I just wouldn't be able to take it. And the guys that are holding the shotgun, which I don't really believe that anymore, because if you know, if it was. If, if somebody came to my house with a shotgun, I'd be probably pretty upset too. But I will be, I will protect her. <laughs> I will protect her. So That's do right. not send all your boys over here. That's right. So I will, pro- if I haven't made that clear, I will protect her. So you're not going to protect her. Uh, not yeah, Yeah. Well, I won't be pulling out guns because, you know, I just think like, gosh, what if, I, you know, that's, that's I was the boy. Job. Or, or if I had a boy mm-hmm. and he went over to somebody's house and then somebody held a shotgun in his face, that's what Ooh, I Oh, like. yeah. You know what? I, I did not, not think about yeah. that. But if we had a son and that happened, I would not be okay with that. That's a good no. point. That is a very good point. So, but I, yeah, I definitely want to protect her. But everything in my mind was racing. Like, I was just so excited to know that I was going to have a daddy's girl. I've always wanted a girl. I wanted a little girl. And she became everything that selfishly I wanted her to be. And um, it was just the greatest moment of my life. How about yours? Yeah, it's like a the prop, like the common grace of God. What yeah. people talk about that, even though um, we were sinners at that time, we well, I mean, we were still sinners, but we were unsaved at that time. That God, in His kindness and His grace, He gave us that little girl, even though we definitely don't deserve that. We deserve hell, but so in God's um, common grace, we were given this beautiful little girl. And I thought, I remember thinking, um, well, first of all, I thought I was going to die because I didn't understand how pregnancy worked. Well, you almost <laughs> did. You got liver cholestasis. I did. I got li- yeah, cholestasis of the liver. That was miserable. I itched all over because it's the bile backs up into your um, bloodstream and. Yep. Um, and your Kaylee, liver, I got yeah. sick, yeah. But I, I really did not understand how how giving birth worked, and in my mind, it seemed like I was not going to make it. I, I was, was going to die. Freshly, I was a fresh healthcare professional. Like yeah. I didn't have a whole lot of years' experience. It was scary, I so I was nervous whenever you were having all those blisters all in your legs from itching yes. and just oh, you never slept. Stop. Oh my gosh! I didn't. Those last t- two to three months, I get about thirty minutes of sleep, and then it would itch, and I would just get up and and, and go, go back to work. And I mean, it, yep. it felt like I was like on um, autopilot. The yep. last the last couple of weeks, but I happened to have a really wonderful boss at the time, Betty. She was so sweet, and she took such good care of me. She always made sure I was propped up. All of the little um, empl- like the coworkers and stuff. I worked at a law firm. They would bring me food. They were just always so incredibly sweet. They were so, so good too. Remember they, that time that um, you asked, or I was on my way home, I think from school. Oh no! And I had been going we to going school there. for almost 10 hours that day. We don't have to tell And I story. drove home <laughs> and I thought, you know what? I'm going to call her. I'm passing downtown Dallas. I'm going to I'm gonna give her a call and see if she'd like some ice cream because that's just the person I am, right? That's who I you am. You were always so sweet. Right? I call, hey, sweetheart, would you like some ice cream? No. Not even no, thank you. No, <laughs> no, not today. No, I don't think so. Okay, so I get uh, about another 25 miles to where I'm getting ready to pull in the driveway. Get a call. You know what? Actually, mm. I do want. I think cream. I would take that ice cream if you get a sack. And you are so sweet. You didn't even complain. And you know what is so funny what about the here? story on the inside? Yeah, I'm sure on the inside you felt a bit like you didn't do anything. You, you said, okay, sweetie, I just made it home. So it's going to be a little while, but I'll bring you up some ice cream. But my boss, on the other hand, Betty, chewed me out from one end to the other end of that, of that <laughs> law firm about making you come back up here. And then when you got there, she came out. She was like, now don't you bring her ice cream next time. Next time she says, no, you make her wait. Yeah. She was so sweet. She was so sweet. About it. But she you, was. You had little quirks like that. You know, you would wait until, I remember when we would pass McDonald's. Oh, it was bad. Or donuts. I was so mean when are I was you, pregnant. Are you hungry? No, you weren't mean. You just wanted things your way. But you were just, you would wait until I passed the donut shop and McDonald's to start bawling all of a sudden she would just start crying start crying start crying i'd be like what what's going on 
you didn't know that I was hungry. And you, you thought I should be about me. Love me. me. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, I'll turn around. Not now. It's too late now. I don't even want you to. Yep, okay. I did. So I let me really, just go faster so I can get you to work quicker. I right legitimately here. thought that if you didn't know I was hungry, it was because you didn't care that I was pregnant. And my doctor even was like, um, so the first, first whenever I first got pregnant, I was really, really sick. I thought I had the flu. I didn't even think I was pregnant. Yep. Um, and so by the time I got to the doctor, we realized I was pregnant and I got into the doctor. Um, she was concerned about how much weight loss was happening within such a short yeah, amount of time. Because you couldn't hardly Because I couldn't keep anything down. But then after the first trimester, the second trimester started and I could eat fine. I was just fine eating. And I, yeah. I put that weight right back on. All I wanted was donuts and Taco Bell all the time. And my doctor was like, um, if okay. you don't quit you're going to get Wait diabetes yeah. and you're not allowed. She literally was like, you're not yeah. allowed to have donuts anymore. And yeah. I was such a monster when I was pregnant. I was like, okay, Good. thank you. Prove it. On the way home. Stop me. <laughs> yeah. Donuts. We'll take a dozen, please. All mm -hmm. glaze and 14 kolaches. Thank That's you right. very much. That's right. And then, yeah, you were so close to at risk of gestational diabetes. It was made us so nervous. You ended up having to drink that nasty formula. Oh, I remember yeah. that. But the thing I remember the most about that day, about having to go drink that formula, was how hungry I was. <laughs> yeah, you were starving. And boy, your <laughs> so test is so close. Your first test came back, what, positive? Your, uh -huh. um, your original initial test. And then they made you drink that nasty. Ugh. Yeah. And then it came back negative, but that's because I didn't eat. And I was so, I was like shaky all over. I was angry. I was mean. Don't get don't well, yeah, if you continue to eat a dozen donuts a day, yeah, absolutely, you'll probably get it. Like, <laughs> don't tell me that. I'm so hungry all the time. <laughs> no, were always you were just, food. you were such a joy to be around when you were pregnant. No, that's I mean, not true. So um, when Kaylee turns one, you start working um, in the hospitals. Yep. You graduate and you start working in the hospital. At this point, you have just become a homemaker. That's right. Well, as soon as you got the job. Yep. So there was a small amount of time where you got to be home while you were waiting for your test results to come in because yep. to be a respiratory therapist, you have to take two different tests and you have to pass them or they won't let you work. It did take you a few tries. No. Three you tests. You have to take three. Oh, three tests. I beg your pardon. Three tests. And then you got the, and so then we waited for the job. So I was working that last month and you got to be home with Kaylee. And it was so cute because you were so nervous about being home with her that you would like put her, all of her toys in one room and um, shut the door so that she couldn't get out and get into anything and then just watch her yeah. to make sure that she didn't get hurt. I just wanted to put like my own little fence around her like with my arms. a little bubble, arms. yes. You know, don't, don't touch this. You'll don't, be safe don't if you stay that. right here. Daddy is here. <laughs> Daddy, come to daddy. Oh, and you remember how mean she was, like, as a baby? She hated if you had beards. So if Justin mm -hmm. did not shave his face, yeah. like, smooth, She'd she pull would it get out. mad. Yeah, she would get so pull mad uh, and yank on it. But She was a painful child. She was painful. To you She'd and to me. stick her finger in your mouth and then start scraping around in your, oh in your gums. Yeah, she was uh, She was painful. She but was. you you finally, you got you got to start working at the hospital. Yep. And I got to start staying home at that point. Then so we waited nice. what, about a year later or so and a couple of moves later, and then we started traveling. That's right, which is really cool because when he was in the hospital or when he was in, in school, actually, somebody came and did a little speech about the different things you can do yep. as a respiratory therapist. And they mentioned which that Which are you pretty can limited. Right, yeah. Like you, I mean, respiratory therapists, every hospital has to have them. Yep. But it's not like you can um, work from home. Well, I mean, you can now, but at the time, you but like as a school nurse, you can't nurse, be a school nurse. Can work yeah, in the that's right. We can work at PFT clinics, but we're very limited. We work so, yet yeah, we can work at long term acute care places, diagnostics, um, pulmonary clinics. But um, now they've done this new, I guess, what is it, the program that's kind of pioneered the way for RTs where we can do telemedicine now? That's pretty so cool. So we're really excited about that. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be neat. That'll take a load off the body because before long, I'm going to need a couple of new hips and a couple of new knees. I just, I foresee it in my immediate future. A lot like Paul Washer. He had to have a bunch of stuff put in his back. Yeah, this guy here has very similar issues of that. So it's pretty cool to have that. But when you were younger, you Paul's could... is probably more degenerative related. Mine is probably more. It is related. not. Do not let him act like it's not. It's not. He's just being a dork. You have a spondyloliosis of um, and and oh, yeah. slipped discs, and oh. you have um, a herniated disc, mm. and and it's sitting on your sciatic nerve. And he works through all this. He had multiple fractures in his in his lower back, and he still goes to work because he's you Superman. Know. And you thought it was in your head at I'm first. Proud, remember? I feel so sorry for me now. Thank you guys. Thank and this is so where much. our uh, 
um, GoFundMe account. And no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it's expensive. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, so, medical care is always expensive. It's so expensive. It's crazy expensive, but it's worth it just to be able to to walk and do my job and be around my family. Yeah. And you get to travel now for your Yay. work, which was where we were actually going with that. And I got distracted. Sorry. That's where we wanted to be. And that's what we're doing. Yes. It's the joy of our lives. Like we never wanted to do anything different. We've always talked about it ever since we were young, wanting to travel to different areas and that's be true. in different places. We have never been home buddies until now. And recently we went on a vacation. Yes. We have forgotten how to vacation because COVID happened and we've been stuck in the house and we had COVID, yeah. which was weird. So now we went from being like experts at traveling and knowing exactly how to pack. and Because, I mean, we've been doing this for, what, seven years now? Almost eight, yeah. Almost eight years we've been traveling. Gosh, so we were out of breath packing that one suitcase. That one just suitcase. To try to get, oh, my so gosh. Much, yeah, we get there. We're just like, I have no idea why we even wanted to leave the house. But yep. we, for the last eight years, have just adored, even before we started traveling for your work, we, we loved, loved going places and, yep. and going Just like trips. a lot of people do. They love to travel. Yeah. Them, but you can be restricted by jobs eight to five. So it's really great that she's able to stay at home with Kaylee and, and the dogs. And, um, you know, I will only work three days a week if I'd like. So then we have stretches where I can have seven, eight days off without missing any work. So we take these little mini vacations, but this one was tough. I think COVID played, um, an instrumental part because they say you can lose 15 to 30% of your lung capacity. Oh, and we were feeling it and I'm feeling it now. <laughs> I know <laughs> it's time for us to stop with all the traveling and stuff. I'm honestly, for the first time ever, I'm going to hire people to help move our stuff here because yep. we, when we first started, we had, um, we left, we left Oklahoma. We went straight to Seattle mm -hmm. for our first job and we had like, a couple of boxes of a couple stuff. Of suitcases you have in a box or two and that was it and we, now we, we fill the gotten, truck up and need a u-haul we need a u-haul that's <laughs> right we have to get a u-haul every single time but it's been such a tremendous blessing it's really cool because the hospitals have um needs with uh with respiratory therapy and, and nursing too where they don't have the staff to fill it whether it's because of like someone going on pregnancy leave or whatever it is or just the and the acuity going up and our census going up so we've needed more rts need more rns and so that's why you see all these critical staffing needs across the country because our hospitals are filling up because of it that makes a lot of sense. So we definitely have had a lot of fun traveling. And that's one of the things that I really wanted to get a chance to share with the listeners, especially the new ones, because a lot of times people will say, well, here, where are you located? And it's going to change. Mm, it usually. Varies, yeah. yeah. Usually we, we move every three to six months. And so here we've been stuck because of the pandemic. We haven't yeah. been able to go anywhere else, but ordinarily three to six months, we would head somewhere else. So what has been your favorite part about traveling so far? Just being with you guys really, and just being able to travel the nation with my family, not having having to worry about, you know, working eight to five Monday through Friday, only getting Saturday and Sunday with you guys. But I get these runs of days where I are in a row and then I get some time off and I enjoy just having that, like that spontaneous trip every now and again. So I think that's my favorite part about traveling is so far it's being with you guys, obviously, but also just learning new cultures and mm -hmm. learning new, um, uh, different ways of doing our everyday, you know, activities that we hadn't learned before. What about you? Um, I think trying the new foods everywhere we go. New foods fun. is really fantastic. Yeah, I really like that. I think that's fun. It's not always good tasting, but it's fun to try new things. And um, one of the things that has surprised me the most about traveling is that every single city looks exactly the same. It does. There's All just big slight differences. Too. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, um, you know, you kind of get a feel for where the Walmart's going to be, where the McDonald's going to be. It's usually the same everywhere you go. Yep. And and that's made it really helpful. When we first started traveling, I was I was barely able to really even go out of the house without you. I couldn't go to the gas station. Yeah, you were very timid, very nervous, nervous because nervous, we were in yeah. a new city all the time. Anxious all the time, yeah. And so it's helped me a lot with that. If, I, if I'm able to get used to things being different, then I don't have to stay in that strict pattern of everything and so that's helped me a lot with with at least that part but so that's what you've enjoyed about it so far as being super nervous and <laughs> <laughs> perfect it's fun to be miserable don't you guys think ah. if you really want to be miserable catch COVID because that's miserable that's the worst thing we've ever had I, I have enjoyed being tested in those areas I yep. enjoy that and I love getting to see new places and, um, and going on vacations and the food. the food the food has been fun but now we're going to shift conversations here a little bit you ready to shift conversations mm, shifting shifting <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Are you ready? We're going to switch over to like the Christianity side of our story. That was kind of like our marriage and our family life and everything. Yep. But when we started traveling, we were actually not saved. We um, were very confused. You were trying your hardest to understand 
I was not wanting to understand at all. I was fine being confused. So you had all these wonderful questions. It's one of the things I admire the most about you is that like you're, um, we were just talking about this earlier, like your thirst and your, your desire to understand God and to understand who he is, what his word says. It's so far beyond anything that, that I experience, even though I'm in the word and I want to know about God and I want to understand him. Like you, you get frustrated if you don't have those answers. Well, I was taught that I was, I, th- I thought I was taught that whenever you did have those que- questions and that, and the pastors, they couldn't come up with any answers or they were frustrated about it, that I was a sinner, that it was, that I was going to hell because I had those questions that I'm questioning God. Like you're doubting. Right. But I was just so sick of this watered down, diluted theology that I just couldn't take it anymore. And that was when um, we started looking online and, and finally found, um, Paul Washer. Yes. And Bismarck. Sent, so yeah, we, so we had just gotten here for our first assignment ever in Bismarck. This was um, five years ago. Uh, and somebody sent me a street preacher from, from Texas, actually on a Facebook group, sent me a Paul Washer sermon. And I was so excited about this because you've been asking me all these questions. And not only did I not have the answers, but I didn't care. I did not understand. I couldn't comprehend why it mattered. Right. And I, I just, I didn't understand from your perspective what it was that you were after. But then I heard Paul Washer explaining these things. And I was like, well, this guy's ah. clear. Yeah, like he's making a lot of that sense. That was the main thing. We were, If you believe what you're teaching mm-hmm. that's in the Bible, why are you not more of an advocate for the Bible? Why are you right. not more passionate about what you're reading? Mm-hmm. And so we were just super confused about it. And we just kind of went on about our merry day um, and went to different churches in different cities Thought we were just holier than thou. thought, man, we're going to church in different cities. We're tithing. We're doing everything we're supposed to do. But then I just got sick of all of this, just like, you know, not, it was not God centered Mm -hmm. at all. It was all about me. It was all about the rock concerts. It was all about, all about the pastor, how smart he was. And it never taught, we were never taught the gospel. Right. Or scripture in at all. It was very discouraging too to be um, told repeatedly that when you ask these questions, that you are uh, being offensive to God when you're just trying to understand him. And so what did you think the first time that you watched but that Paul Washer video? Because oh. you had worked all day. I was blown away and I wanted more. I was like, where did you find this guy? Right. Because he, he believes what he's teaching. Mm-hmm. He finally, there's finally somebody online that, or somebody that I could talk, that I could relate to who actually believes what he is teaching. And I wanted more of that. What yeah. about you? I think the thing that blew me away the most was just how logical what he was saying. Yep. Was. It was biblical and it was logical. So people, they quote scripture a lot and they don't make sense with what they're saying because they're using it out of context. It may sound right with what they're saying, but what they're saying makes no sense. And yep. so like Joyce Myers and, and Kenneth Copeland and Creflo Dollar, all those guys, they would say all these things. Then, then you go into the word yourself and you're like, well, wait a minute, but Where? this scripture says something different. And now I don't understand. It's all revolved around healing and money yeah, and money, donations yeah. mm-hmm. and give me and, and sow a seed for this amount for this person. Otherwise, you're not faithful. And it was yeah. just, I mean, you guys know how it is. You just grow sick of it, listening yeah. to it. And you just think, you know, I'm just, I'm tired of it. I hope God spews you out of his mouth because that's what he's going to do. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to find something that actually makes sense. Yeah. That actually, I'm actually going to try to seek God and I'm going to try to, for the betterment of my family. Yeah, because you were very nervous about that once Caleb. But you were like that too. You were sick of it. Yeah, it was very, it was exhausting to be on that that hamster wheel all the time of all the things you're supposed to be doing. And so whenever you hear someone like Paul Washer and he's really he's preaching biblically, everything he's saying makes sense. Everything he's saying is so logical. And then you go to God's word. Um, Obviously, that night I got saved, and and I've mentioned this on the on the program a lot, but. What we didn't realize at first when we first heard that Paul Washer sermon was that what we were hearing was Reformed theology because we didn't know there was such a thing. We didn't know that. No. We'd never heard, I'd never even heard the word Calvinism. I had no. never heard, I didn't know who John Calvin was. I didn't know who Martin Luther was. If you had said, do you, do you like to listen to Martin Luther or read Martin Luther's books? I would have been like, like Martin Luther was, King? Was he a president Junior? or what? Who is Martin Luther? What? Um, okay. Yeah. We don't know. I had no idea. But we knew that this guy was the real deal. We yeah. knew. What he was talking about was true because he was passionate about it. He believed everything that he was saying. So I, therefore, it made me want to believe exactly everything he was saying as well. Yeah. And then you go to the word of God and you're like, wait a minute, what he's saying is true. It's not all about me. It's not about me. You mean to tell me that God's word is written about him? I'm not supposed to be wealthy, healthy, and wise? Weird. Odd. That's pretty strange. So it was, it was a really weird first year. 
And um, we ended up getting sent like the strange fire conference where we learned about how um, all the stuff that we had learned in the word of faith was wrong. And that's John MacArthur, that's Justin Peters, Vody Bauckham, um, Conway Mbewe. And, uh, and I still at that point did not know that these were all reformed teachers. And so what happened for me is that I, I had read somebody online that said um, reformed or Calvinism is, uh, is not scriptural. That if somebody says they're a Calvinist, they're probably not saved. And I knew at that point lots of people that claim to be Calvinists. And so I was like, well, I need to learn what this is so that if they're really genuinely deceived, I can, you know, I can talk to them about yep. it. So I went straight to John uh, Calvin's That books. was our main kind of where we agreed on big time is that we needed to learn the gospel. Yeah. We needed to learn more about the Bible so that we could fight these, the atheists. Well, like I would read her off questions mm -hmm. from like atheistic pages. Yeah. Yes. And, and been like, so how, how would you fight this? How would you approach this? Yeah. And she studied and studied and studied. And now she's come to the point where she's able to, you know, fight them with the gospel. And it's so impressive. It's so sweet. He's always been very encouraging to me to make sure that we have the answers to these things. Um, I think the, that's how you convert a lot of people is just knowing exactly what you're talking about without a shadow of a doubt. God's going to do his part. He's going to take care of them. He's going to take care of you. And what's going to happen is already going to happen, but he's put you in their path for a reason. Yeah, and you I can think say that, predestined on the show. Yep. Okay. okay predestined. <laughs> it's already going right. to happen. We can say it on this show. Say it predestined. Yep. I love it. Whenever <laughs> anything like we're watching a show or something and somebody will be all like, I deserve better. And he'll just be like, what do they really deserve, babe? What do they really have? I love my husband. He's so sweet. That's right. That's right. So uh, we we learned about all this Calvinism. I read uh, John Calvin's Institutes, and uh, as I was reading it, I realized that this was not unbiblical, that it was very, very biblical. And so I started talking to you about all these different things. And I remember the one thing that you really um, were encouraged by was the sovereignty of God, like how logical and biblical that was it makes sense you could find it in scripture repeated over and over and over again and you'd be like here it is right here in the psalms yeah where it's not like god doing for us like people like like a genie that's how i was brought up all of my life was that you ask god for something he's supposed to give it and i just thought okay guys you guys don't understand how powerful <laughs> you know this being is he is all powerful all knowing and he is the creator of the universe mm -hmm. so you feel like you can ask him for whatever you like and he's just Poof, it is supposed to be there. But we already don't deserve the breath that we give, that we get, like the life that we lead, the air that we breathe, the uh, common grace of love, joy. We don't deserve that. The first time we sin, like Adam and Eve, their consequence was instant, right? Like they faced the consequence of their sin. The world fell. And um, you and I are graciously allowed to continue living after we sin. And not only that, but then God is going to, to save some. No one deserves to get saved, but he saves some. I mean, um, it's, it's the audacity of somebody who already doesn't deserve what they have to then go back and say, also, I want more money. And you know what? I don't ever want to have any troubles or trials or be sick, even though Jesus was literally right. beaten and, and killed on the cross and all of the apostles, <laughs> same. So but, what does God have in store for you? Right. That's what makes sense. If he'll sacrifice his, his son like that and enjoy it, how much more do you deserve? And that's what I always thought in my head. Like, God, if you would, beat your son like this how much more do you not like me and i just never understood you know kind of what was going on there and i couldn't correlate what was it happening make sense with how we were being taught no. i even asked you that one day i was like why didn't god just let somebody else die that was less important right because we didn't understand what the cross was about or why jesus even needed to go through all of those things and so reform theology is great in that it's really helpful to understand biblical hermeneutics and the way that the bible yep. needs to be read in context but um, okay, so I have a question for you. Okay. What made you start this podcast? Oh. Like why, like all the way all the way around, I want to know the logistics behind what made you start. Because you were saved, obviously, in that room that night. You were converted. You've lived the life that you were supposed to um, as far as following God and, and being a Christian. Now, why did you start up a podcast? Well, excellent. Excellent question, Justin. Um, Thank you, Laura. You're welcome. I'm going to need you to re-ask it, but in a funny voice. Hey, Laura, <laughs> why did you start a podcast there, babe? Well, Plankton, the reason <laughs> I started this podcast. Uh, hey, excuse me. Why did you start a podcast there, babe? It's Hank Hill. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, Hank. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> 
Good to see you. Okay, I'm gonna go now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 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 I wish I could do them back to you, but I can't. I'm, I'm not very. It's good okay. Myself. I'm not either. I just Whatever. play around until I get it right. He's really not even doing any. Um, I'm, I'm I'm inserting the words for him. It's a machine. <laughs> yeah, it's a teleprompter. It is. I'm kidding. This is totally just him being super talented. Um, I wanted to do a podcast. I had already started a blog. The blogs. The point of the blog was to sort of help me um, chronal chronological. No. Chronologicalize. Chronologicalize. Okay. All right. My, look at that my progress in sanctification and how I was growing and to do that in a way where if somebody else was starting where I was starting, where they were fresh out of the word of faith or fresh out of some sort of false teaching that they could come alongside me and be encouraged by the fact that we're all sort of, you know, learning together. And so I started a blog and then I noticed that I had an awful lot of free time on my hands that I was wasting like playing games on my phone and stuff. And so I was very, um, I was very, I was convicted. Convicted, okay. I was very convicted by uh, the book Susie Spurgeon, um, The Life and Legacy of Susie Spurgeon, which you've basically read because I kept reading all of it to you um, and crying about it because it's so sweet. But um, Susie lived her life in extreme amounts of pain and she still spent all of her time, all of her free money writing and encouraging pastors, sending books to pastors, sending um, items to pastors' wives and their children. And she created an entire life around um, being a blessing to other people and being encouraging and edifying. And I thought, well, you know, we have um, a situation right now where if you're a pastor, pretty much anywhere except for like the really worst parts of the world, you have access to all those books for free. So I don't really need to send you these books, all of the books yeah, you can all stream the them Puritans, yeah, they're all, they're all in the, the public domain. So what can I do to be a, a, a blessing to the body of Christ? How can I be edifying? By, like, through your experiences leading up to your Christianity? Is that what you, you're saying? Right, like, yeah. So that they didn't when, have to go through. I mean, obviously, they're going to yeah. go through what they're going to go through. But just to, just to a, help them yes. with their trials and tribulations, yes. just to assist them with that. Because I know how um, lone, lonely it felt for us to be yeah. like, um, hey, we know nothing about scripture. We so now start... I'm going to disciple all these people. Yeah. So like, I wanted to make sure that other people knew, like if you, if you're starting from a point where you have to, um, it, rather than learn scripture from the beginning, you have to unlearn all this stuff. Right. So we didn't just get, we didn't get to just go to God's word and open it up as new believers and really just like enjoy the beauty of his word. We had to unlearn all the nonsense yep. that we had been taught. And it's discouraging if you're doing that without other people that have been through that. Cause a lot of the people that we knew had um, at that point after getting saved, they had always been in the church. They, they maybe didn't go through that. And so the podcast, the idea was to hopefully be encouraging the people who were also going through that to point them to good teachers, to point them away from false teachers, to, to really um, highlight the fact that God is gracious enough to save me. And then also just to be using my time more wisely um, for the glory of God. And so this was, this was the way that I wanted to do it. And at first I started out by calling it afterthought because it was supposed to be all the thoughts that I had after I finished writing yep. a blog that I couldn't put in a blog, but somebody already had that name. <laughs> so what do you like? So out of all that, what do you like the most about it? About podcasting? About podcasting. And then obviously you have to tell me, what you hate about it the most besides pineapple pizza, because I know for sure if you hate it and it disgusts you as much as I do, it, it does me. Then, yep. It then is. Pineapple pizza is the worst. You that is a huge dislike. <laughs> um, my favorite thing about podcasting is actually getting to uh, get to know the listeners. So it's weird to me that people listen at all. Um, when I first started this, my blog was not like a giant blog or anything. It was just a, it was just a small little blog. And I thought, you know, 10, 20 people will probably listen to each podcast. Yeah. And, and so whenever I um, first started and, and Michelle Leslie came on the program, um, 300 or so people listened to those, uh, those episodes. And I was like, that's insane. 300 people. I never expected that. And from there it's grown quite a bit. And so the fact that people listen to me is weird, but the fact that they want to then reach out to me and, and they want to talk to me about things. They want to tell me like what they like. They, they're so encouraging. They're so kind. It's like a community now of like of, of listeners all sure. on Facebook, on that group, they're a community together. But I'm sure the opposite of that could be more difficult sometimes than it can be um, for the stuff that, that kind of cancels it out. Well, so my least favorite thing then, is that what you mean? <laughs> yeah. My least favorite thing is interviewing scary people. Yep. 
I am not an extrovert, guys. This is something that I, I, um, I find so true. Are very so true. You find that's what amazes me is right? that when you started this, is like you could not talk to the gas station clerk whenever we went to go that's get right. gas station. You're 100 percent right. Or we went to go get when we go get um, gas and mm-hmm. and snacks. I would have to go in and talk to the clerk and yep. and get the gas and everything. And now she's got this big podcast. You have this big podcast, and I'm just so proud of how hard you've worked. Thank you. I couldn't do it without all your help. I know. But it is, <laughs> and providing the special stuff that we have. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's absolutely. All you. But it is very okay. intimidating to talk to people. <laughs> um, I I find that now that I have had to talk to some people that were scary to talk to, talking to regular people is easier. So it's interesting how, like, if you push the limits a little bit, yep. the smaller things become easier. And and it's it's something that you try to teach me all the time that you're always telling me like, these people are not going to hurt you. Like they're, they're not going to be angry at you. Right. Like you, you can say hi to people and no one's going to be like, why did you say hi to me? <laughs> and I didn't, I just, or I what's didn't the worst it. they could say. Right. right. You know? Yeah. I used to say that. What's the worst they could do? Like when, when you said you need to invite Ray Comfort onto your program. And I was like, no, no, I'm not going to do that. And you were like, what's the worst he could do? Say no. And I was like, no, he's definitely going to say no. Like, that's just <laughs> but like, how no, is he going to say no, yeah, right? Like, like what is the depth of his no going to be? Exactly. And if you guys have not checked out my interview with Ray Comfort, there is a card right above. If you're on YouTube, now, if you're not on YouTube and you're listening to us on podcasting, then there's not a card there. You're just going to actually have to scroll through and find it. Or I can link to it in the descriptions below. But there should be a card up there for you, um, the YouTube subscribers, if you want to watch that original um, um, and I came to you that day and I literally said, when Ray Comfort's people contacted me and they were like, sure, he can come on. I said, I'm not doing this and I'm quitting podcasting. Yep. And I was serious. I was like, I'm not interviewing this man. I'm not wasting his time. I'm not important enough to waste his time. I do not matter. And I am, I am too scared and I'm not going to do it. And he said, yes, please. I'd love to interview I'd with you. I'd love to be on your birthday. He was, uh, so, he was so nice. He to be on you. Yeah, he was so It's such a nice honor and privilege. That was perfect. That's how he did. That's how he did. <laughs> And I remember thinking the whole time I was like, stop smiling glory, like an idiot. Stop glory be to like God. Glory be to God. I was smiling at the camera like this. Uh-huh. Okay. I was so nervous. But when you get through things like that, it makes yep. everything else easier. But I still I still find that to be the one thing that I like the least is um, having to interview scary people. And being interviewed is also quite scary. Um, yep. But for the glory of God, I'll do that. And Same. Well, for it's me, it's going on it's going on podcast with you. Is that the scariest I think it's probably thing? the scariest thing for what me. Is, yeah. What is your least favorite thing about having a wife podcasting, though? Like That okay. every once in a while I have to fill in <laughs> and be on the show. No, I think it is. Well, you know what? I mean, it really is time constraining. So especially when I'm home, um, I'm when I'm at, when I'm at work, I don't get to see him when I'm home. If you're really busy and you have a bunch of interviews laid up, uh, laid out and stuff like that, it's really difficult because I just want to spend all my time with you. But I understand that you have to be here to do your job. You have a job just like I do. You have to perform it. And I've just had to come to terms with that. But I think that's the, that and the pineapple pizza, I think that's been the worst for me. That's been the most discouraging. Um, It's been, (laughs) it it causes distraught and pain. It does. But I'm tired of, I'm tired of the pineapple. The heresy is just terrible with pineapple. I just cannot believe there are so many other toppings. My goodness gracious. (laughs) There's so many topping options here for pizza guys. Keep the pineapple separate, put some whipped cream on it and eat it if you have to. Exactly. What, what is your favorite thing? Because I know one thing that you've always said since we've been married is that it's a shame that I can't get paid to talk because whereas I can't talk to anyone else, I am very introverted. I'm, I'm not comfortable right. talking to anyone else, but I can talk to you nonstop. You do love so, to talk. I think that's I think that's the thing I like about it most is that you get to express your ideas and your concerns and you get to have somebody or an audience to actually talk to that shares, that is like-minded um, with you and, and your beliefs. I think that has really been promising and very um, hopeful for me and helping you learn that people aren't scary and that a lot of people, more more, more people, nine out of 10 people like you more um, than you think don't. Isn't that weird? I love what Charles Spurgeon says about it though. He says that don't be upset when people hate you or no, don't be upset when people say bad things about you because you're far worse than they know. Gosh, (laughs) doesn't he know the truth? Um, We have random silly questions to talk to you about. Hmm. Well, do you have any for me? I don't I really do. know. Okay, go ahead. You didn't think of a random silly question? <sighs> well, I didn't know that that was on the agenda, Lauren, so I'm it's just not real 11, sure. It's number 11, Justin. Oh, See I'm it? sorry. Okay, so um, last question for me is why do you only use the squirrel for squirrel moments? Why not any other rodent or s- skunk? I love that question. Did you just think about that at the top of your head? why I married him this and because he puts ranch on everything like I do <laughs> I love that question that is a great question okay so um what happens with the squirrel is 
from the very beginning of podcasting, I would get distracted. And if a guest came on or we had, you know, um, a co-host and stuff like that, it would be repeated over and over again to me. Like, oh, if you had a squirrel. Oh, I see. And so I just adopted that <laughs> as like my thing, you know, yep. like hashtag not professional was the thing for okay. a long time. Yep. And, and the squirrel just became something that I was so well known for that I had to, I had to embrace it. Cause yeah. I'm constantly being distracted by a literal squirrel that actually scurries across this window right here <laughs> all the time. And so, I mean, it's happened with Justin Peters was on and I had to be like, don't tell Justin Peters about that squirrel. Don't tell Justin Peters about that. Fast but there was this one squirrel one time. He had battle armor on and everything. I got to tell you about this squirrel. (laughs) You need to know about it. And that is exactly why. And why no other rodent? Um, I think that that is probably simply because squirrels are so much cuter. Uh, I see. So it just kind of follows that concept. Like if you see something on the road or or, um, when the squirrel looks up, he's like, oh, car. Kind of like that. And I'm all in the car like, (gasps) squirrel. And my poor husband, like the thing that I do on the live events where I scream squirrel, that's your life. Like I legitimately like, we'll just be driving around. I'll like, (gasps) and he'll almost wreck. Mm. And he'll be like, oh my gosh, what's wrong? And I'll be like, did you see that squirrel? It was so fluffy and cute. <laughs> Such a good looking tree out there. Did you get a chance did to see that? Did you see that, that tree? Pretty leaves. Oh my goodness. Pretty I branches. like saw back here at this uh, beautiful <laughs> tree. I need right. to turn around so we can go <laughs> see it. Well, I Such think we, head. what do you think? Think we covered it all? I have a silly question for you. Oh, I was hoping to pass on that, but proceed. I'm not going to let you pass on that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So my silly question is actually one that I love getting the chance to ask people whenever they come on the program. And I have no idea how you're going to answer this, but I can take some guesses. If you could pick any superhero to be and any superhero for your wife to be, which one would we be? Um, Obviously Superman, Superwoman. Superman and Superwoman. Weren't they related? Aren't they brothers and sisters? No, they're not brother and sister. My they're gosh. Not? No, they're just from the same planet, dude. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I showed you how much I know about how about that? Um, <laughs> kind of a Marvel girl, not really a DC kind of, kind of guy. I feel the same way. I feel the same way, but still. And yet, you chose Superman. Well, I'm not going to, I mean, who am I, who am I going to choose? In Marvel? I mean, but who would you, who did you think I was going to choose? Superman. Oh, well then cut. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Humblebees, thank you so much for joining us. That really is all we have. Thank you very much, Humblebees, for watching today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya. Thanks for listening, Humble Bees. This is Tulips and Honey. Over and out. I think that diamond still needs a little more polish. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, that is a fun word, isn't it? That's acuity. a fun word. Acuity. Acuity. It's a cute word. Cute. You're going to be able to keep getting work. Like. Stop touching my hand. I'm sorry. I'm going to make this work. Let's put this right here. It's my hand. I own it. It's mine. Ow. Omni om omnipotent. 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 I like omnipotent. Omnipotent. Sorry. Is it like so potent? Omniscient. Om <laughs> Omniscient, omni. <laughs> I thought I, I'd go to the mailbox every morning for you. Hey, guess what? Your million dollar shack's not here. <laughs> wow, somebody's calling me. <laughs> Who's FaceTiming me? Somebody's FaceTiming me. Is that your friend? Should I answer it? Do you need to answer that? I'm not going to answer it. It's your okay, and then what do you want me to do? You want me to take us out after your silly question? Take us out to dinner? Oh, no. take us out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, I want you to take us out to dinner. Okay, <laughs> I will take you out to dinner. What do you want tonight? Um, okay, so let's see here. My silly question. And then, yes, I do. I want you to take us out. Okay, all right. You have to say my silly question again. Um, what did you used to say at these points? Shenanigans! 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 I just so, need you doing all of the sounds for me all the time. No, you used to say stop here or something like that. Oh, future Lauren. Yeah. Okay. Uh, past Lauren. <laughs> just kidding. Go ahead. Past Lauren. <laughs> I love you so Sorry, much. You're so shy. adorable. Okay. Um, quiet on set. It's handsome when he looks up like that. It's a smolder. It's my smolder, my stoic look. <laughs> Thank you very much for hum. Well, oh, shoot. <laughs> Where are you going? We have to finish. We're not done. We're done. No, I have to finish talking. What? I'm not done talking. You talk the rest of it. But your chair is empty. What? You can't just leave. <laughs> wait. Wait. Perfect. <laughs> We're um, gonna keep